Thank you for being part of the Oakwood Free Will Baptist Church Ministries. Our prayer is that those who listen to the Word of God will find a greater revelation of God's purpose in their lives. For additional resources, please visit us on the web at www.oakwoodfwb.com. Today, may you be encouraged, strengthened, and refreshed by our message. All right, if you have your Bibles tonight, turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. We're, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, a firm foundation. Um, a firm foundation. Ephesians chapter 6, beginning in verse 10. Through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul uh, penned these words. And of course, we know that Paul is talking to Christians uh, because he said, Finally, my brethren. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that you also may know my affairs and how I do. Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister with the Lord, in the Lord, shall make known unto you all things, whom I have sent to you for the same purpose that you might know our affairs and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all men that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for one more opportunity that we have to gather and to worship tonight. Lord, I thank you so much for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, what a joy it is to be with them every time that we can gather together around the Word of God, and how sweet it is to be able to read the Word and study the Word and learn from the Word together. Lord, I pray that you would bless them today. Lord, I know that you've blessed all of us immensely. Lord, I pray an extra blessing on them today. Lord, would you just uh, lead them and guide them in uh, paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Lord, I pray that uh, you would meet the needs in their lives. Lord, I know that there are so many needs that we have in this church. So many folks who have physical illnesses, those who are having surgeries, Lord, as well as those who are struggling spiritually. And Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters right now. I pray that you would give them what they need to, to be, uh, to be all they can be for Jesus. And Lord, I pray that uh, you would bless this hour as we look into the Word of God, that you would draw us to yourself. I pray that your will would be done in our hearts and lives. I pray that we would be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> there was a lady by the name of Kathy Ratliff uh, who was participating in a parenting class with her or at her church when she explained to her six-year-old daughter, Kayla, that she was taking a course to help her be a better mommy. The next Sunday after church, Kayla became upset through a temper tantrum because she was not getting her way, both parents tried to calm her down, but with tears streaming down her face and in a loud voice, Kayla said this to her mother, you told me that you were taking a course to make you a better mommy. Well, it's not working. <laughs> um, and you know, they're humorous things that kids say, but these days, moms and dads, families in general, because to be honest with you nowadays, it's mostly not mom and dad that are raising children. It's grandparents that are raising children. And by the way, nothing wrong with that. 
Um, I am very thankful for a, a, a grandmother, both grandmothers who love Jesus and who were a tremendous influence on my life. And, uh, but, but again, you know, these days, parents, grandparents, they're wondering, am I being any kind of influence on my kids and my grandkids? Uh, am I doing the right thing? Am I, am I doing what God would have me to do? Um, not only in our society today is there financial insecurities, but folks, we are facing a moral dilemma in our world. We really are. And it is becoming more and more difficult to bring children up in such a secular society to where that they know the things of God and they're following the things of God. It's becoming more and more difficult to do that. <clears throat> our, our children are more confused than ever. And so it behooves us to even more so be in the Word of God, even more so to be faithful to the house of God. Because if you think about it, your children, your grandchildren, they are bombarded all week long, especially when they go to school. Uh, they're bombarded with tr untruths. I, should, I was trying to say truths, but untruths based on what God's Word tells us. And so it's important that they, they get the instruction in the home that they need to be able to combat the things that they're getting most everywhere else. And so it's important. You know, Paul, Paul again said, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. And so... As parents, as families, and by the way, these, these verses that we read, it's not just for families, it's for individuals. So I want you to get that, get that understanding tonight. But you cannot be the person that God intended you to be. You can't be a parent that God intends you to be without first understanding that we have to be strong in the Lord. Whether it's in our personal lives or for our families, we have got to be strong in the Lord. And Paul, I believe, gives us some ways that we can do that. There are very practical ways in this passage. Notice what he said. Uh, the first thing that he mentioned in verse 14 is the belt of truth. The belt of truth. God is good to give us truth so that we know how to live our lives. You know, I'm glad that this is our standard. And that is what our standard is, isn't it? Isn't it God's Word? It is God's Word. If it's anything else, then we're not on a firm foundation. So we have to stand on the truth of God's Word. He did not leave us to find our own way. And I'm glad He didn't. He gave us the infallible, inspired, and errant Word of God. He gave us this truth to live by. But this is becoming, again, more and more difficult these days because people are creating their own truth. What's right for you may not be right for me, and what's wrong for you may not be wrong for me. And they're, they're creating their own truth. And I mentioned this morning from Romans chapter 1, where it, it talks about that people are worshiping and serving the creature more than the creator. It's all about us. It's not about God anymore. And so there's no standard for right or wrong. And when you get away from God's truth, there is no standard for people to know what is right and what is wrong. Kids, even kids today, have nothing to base their lives on if everything is relative. And that is where we are today. Everything is relative. Everything goes. And it's simply not what God intended. You know, one of the things that my father, I remember years ago, my dad told me this. He said, son, when you have a family, don't just teach your kids how to make a living. Teach them how to live. And particularly how to live for God. Don't just teach them the fundamental truths of how to make a living and how to be successful in that area, but teach them how to live for God. And he said this, you cannot do that apart from God's truth. You have to have the truth of God's word in order to base everything that you believe on. But then notice what Paul said in verse 14. He mentions the word righteousness. Teach your family, teach your children, you yourself, understand from God's Word how to live your life. Teach your children how to the importance of making right choices. There are not only physical ramifications for doing wrong, but there's also emotional ones. Um, a pastor, when I was growing up, he said this, and a lot of pastors said this that I heard. I heard more than one pastor say this when I was growing up. He said this, it is never right to do wrong. It is never wrong to do right. So think about that. I mean, that's really simple, isn't it? But how true it is. It is never right to do wrong. It is never wrong to do right. Wrong choices don't just hurt the one making the wrong choices. They also hurt the ones that are closest to them. You know, I, I'm reminded even recently of a family who've been going through some 
tough situations with their children. And it's because the children have been making wrong choices and it literally is breaking mom and dad's hearts. Literally. Righteousness. Teach your children, teach your families how to live righteously. And folks, it doesn't happen by accident. You've got to train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old or she is old, they will not depart from it, the Bible says. So we train them, we teach them the importance of being of living a righteous and a holy life. But then number three, Paul mentions the gospel of peace. Literally, translated in verse 15, the gospel which is peace. It's sad to see so many people in our community, folks, that have no hope and no peace because they do not know the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. You know, I, I love, and I mentioned this before, but I love what Dave Ramsey says on his show every time. And I, if I'm not mistaken, he still does this. The only way to have financial peace is to know the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. And that is so true. Folks, folks all around us, they don't have peace. And Paul said this, if we had hope in this life only, we would be of uh, all men most miserable. I'm glad that there's more to life than what we see in the here and now. I'm glad that this life is not all there was, because if it was, we would be miserable. If we thought, man, I've got to live this life, continue to live it as I live it, with all the trouble and all the trials and all the, uh, the things that I have to put up with on a day-to-day -day basis, man, what have I got to look forward to? But folks, the truth is, Jesus himself said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am there you may be also. That's John chapter 14. And so I'm glad that because of the gospel, because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, we can have forgiveness and forgiveness brings peace. See, a lot of folks think that peace comes from something else. And they miss out because they don't know Jesus. He is that Prince of Peace that gives us peace. If you remember what Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, beginning in verse 4 through verse 7, he said, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You know, it's easy to read that verse, isn't it? And to say, I praise God because God gives us peace. And it's easy to say that when things are going exactly the way you want them to go. But when you have trial and trouble, you have situations that come up in your life, and you have obstacles in front of you that you're thinking, how am I going to get through this? That is when your faith is put to the test. You know, I don't care how, how many times that you've had this done or not had this. Listen, when somebody's got a surgery ahead of them, I'm going to be honest with you. It's a difficult thing to think about being put under. Brother Mike's going to have surgery tomorrow. And folks, I know that you're praying for him and we're praying for him. But it's not just the physical part of it, the soreness and all that that happens. There's something emotionally inside of you that thinks, oh, i got to have surgery. And I don't care how big and how strong you think you are. When, it, when you face it, it's a different situation. And so, yes, sir, <laughs> Brother Tim. And so, you know, there is that anxiousness there. There's that fear of the unknown and wondering, all right, you know, I know they got to put me under. they got to do this and that. And there are just uncertainties. And that is true. But the truth is, folks, life is uncertain. There are so many uncertainties in life. But you know what? It doesn't matter because God gives us peace in spite of our circumstances, not because of them. In spite of them. If we'll simply learn to do what Paul said, that is, be careful for nothing, be anxious for nothing, don't worry about anything, you pray about everything, and that peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. If it were me that said that, then I would tell you, I don't know if that's true or not. That wasn't me that said that. That was God. God said that. That is a promise that he's given us. You let God's peace rule and reign in your life. That's what he wants. Uh, but the gospel, which is peace, the gospel itself brings peace to the world. It brings peace to individuals. It brings peace to families. I'll tell you this. If you knew some of the things that I knew, and some of you do know some things that some families have been going through, it would blow your mind. And by the way, some of these families don't know Jesus. And it is no wonder that they're facing some of the situations they're facing 
Because I'll be honest with you, if I didn't have Jesus in my life, I'd be having some of the same problems they're having. But I'm going to tell you, folks, that gospel brings peace and comfort and hope, all these things that the world needs to hear. But then number four, Paul mentions this. He mentions taking on, verse 16, the shield of faith. Faith doesn't mean that everything will always go right for us, but it does mean every time I go through a difficulty, the Lord is right there with me every step of the way. And at one point, Jesus' disciples were out on the Sea of Galilee, and a storm came up, and Jesus was at the bottom of the boat sleeping. One of the disciples came down and woke him and said, Hey, if you don't come up here and help us, we're going to die. And I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he said. If you don't come up here and help us, we're going to die. And Jesus rebuked him and said this, O ye of little faith. That's how I feel I am sometimes. O ye of little faith. You see, faith helps us see what God sees. Faith helps us to look beyond what we can naturally see and see what God sees. And that is, He is with us every step of the way. Those disciples, as they're out on that boat and the storm came up, was Jesus not right there with them? Yes, He was. But all they could do is watch and see what they saw in the storm and all the waves tossing and trying to rip the boat apart and so forth. That's all that they could see. What they didn't understand is Jesus was right there with them every step of the way. And he would not allow that to happen. Faith helps us to see what God sees. We sometimes see obstacles as problems, but God sees them as opportunities. You ever have trial and trouble and you think, Lord, why is this happening? Lord, why did you allow this to come into my life? By the way, you know that every good and perfect gift comes from God, right? But God does allow things to come into our lives sometimes. Sometimes it's because we're straying and we're going the wrong path. Sometimes it's simply to teach us how to have faith. To teach us how to have faith. And so there was a story in the Bible in 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 8 when Elisha looked at things differently than his servant because he saw through eyes of faith and his servant did not. Notice what it says. And this is uh, 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 8. We'll start reading in verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. The man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent unto the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and saved himself there not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing, and he called the servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? One of the servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet of Israel, telling the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he's in Dothan. Therefore he sent hither, uh, thither horses and chariots and a great host, can you imagine this king sending all these people to fetch Elisha? And so it says that they came by night and they could pass the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host to pass the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? What are we going to do? They're surrounding us. And he, and he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, O oh Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Folks, I'll tell you what, I, I love the verse of Scripture that tells us the angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that feared him to deliver him. Isn't that an awesome thing? This, this servant did not see what Elisha saw until Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes. Let him see what I see. Let him see that you're here with us and you're not going to let anything happen. And so it's an awesome thing to know that, uh, that by faith, we take on the shield of faith and that even though everything doesn't always go right, uh, the Lord is right there with us every step of the way. You know, it reminds me of what the Bible tells us, that he is that ever-present help in a time of need. And it doesn't matter whether you're surrounded by the enemy 
or you're going through a surgery, or you're, you're facing difficult times with your family, or your children, or whatever it may be, He is an ever-present help in a time of need. He is everywhere present at one time. We talked about that in Sunday school this morning. He is omnipresent. We've been going through a series on the attributes of God, and we talked about His omnipotence, His omni uh, omniscience, and now His omnipresence. Folks, God not only knows where we are, He knows what our needs are. He is right here with us every step of the way. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And it doesn't matter how bad the situation in your life, He is with you every step of the way. We can trust in Him. We can have that faith in Him. But He mentions several more things, and I'm just going to briefly go through them. He mentions having salvation. Folks, we cannot live the way God intends for us to live without salvation. He mentions, number six, the Word of God. We cannot live the way He wants us to live apart from, thus saith the Word of God. And then, number seven, he mentions prayer. The last thing Paul mentions in the passage about being able to stand strong is simply the word prayer. Do you believe in the power of prayer? Amen. 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 Have you personally known where God has met your, not only your needs, but other people's needs as an answer to prayer? Amen. And yet, sometimes, what do we do rather than going in prayer to God? We simply think, well, what am I going to do? What am I going to do to remedy this situation? When the first thing we ought to do is go to Him in prayer and say, Lord, here is this need. God doesn't need you to tell Him that, that prayer request for His benefit, but it is for your benefit. Lord, I recognize that my dependence is upon you. I am not sufficient in and of myself. I need you in my life. Therefore, I am requesting this. And it is for our benefit but God hears and He answers our prayers. Here's the problem. Does God always answer our prayer the way that we want Him to? No. But does He always answer prayer? Yes. He either answers it with yes, no, or not yet. So we've got to learn when we pray. You see, we pray selfishly so many times. So many times. Rather than doing what Jesus did in the garden, Father, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. A lot of times we pray, God, I need it done, and I need it done this way. This is what I need. Go ahead and give it to me. When in turn, we ought to be saying, God, whatever your will is, Lord, you know what my heart's desire is, but your will be done. That's the way we ought to be praying. And sometimes we don't. I believe in the power of prayer and... Um, and so, folks, I'll tell you, there, there are so many needs, in, not just in the church, but in the community. I get phone calls all the time. I get text messages. Sometimes I get text messages from people I don't even know who they are. And it will have a text message, Brother Wayne, could you please pray for my family? And I would, I would really love, I, I don't know whether people think that I know who they are texting. I don't know whether they think I've got caller ID that everybody's name comes up on my phone because it doesn't. But I'll just respond. And sometimes I'll ask, who is this? Um, and sometimes they will respond by who it is, and sometimes they won't. Uh, but some of those requests, um, I will let them know all of them requests. I will let them know, you know what, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for this situation. And folks, I'll tell you, there are, there are many times that I wake up in the middle of the night, and God has certain people on my heart, and I pray. And I will tell you, those are some of the sweetest times that I, I, I would not trade for anything in this world. Uh, I woke up, let's see, it was probably Tuesday of this past week. It was either Monday or Tuesday. I woke up at 2.30 in the morning. I didn't get to bed till 12. I woke up at 2.30, and God just burdened me with so many people. And I'll be honest with you, I just had the greatest time, not, not because of the burden that I had for these folks, but just because of the privilege that I had to pray for them. And I, I'll tell you, uh, myself and the Lord, we had a really good time together. I began to cry and pray and pray some more and cry some more and just pour out my heart to God for these folks. And most of them were you folks. And what a sweet thing. You know, we just, we don't take prayer, I think, seriously sometimes. When we take it for granted. When God said, you know what, if you want to live the life that is pleasing to me, if you want to live in a way that's successful as a Christian, then you've got to pray. You've got to pray. Don't ever quit praying. Keep praying. 
matter of fact, the Bible says that we're to pray without ceasing. Always, always be in an attitude of prayer. You know, a lot of times I think that we we give God our needs, but a lot of times we just simply need to pray and give Him praise. God, thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done in my life. God, without you, I would be nothing. Folks, I'm going to tell you, there is nothing that can replace good old-fashioned prayer in our lives. So I hope that you will take these things to heart tonight. And I want us to end the service. I know it's not very long tonight. Um, this is what God had in mind for us. Uh, but I want us to end tonight uh, around uh, the altar. And I want us to pray. And we've got some folks that are having procedures coming up. And I know we want to pray for Brother Mike uh, for tomorrow. And uh, pray that not only God would guide the doctor's hands, but also that that surgery would go flawlessly. And that God would just use those doctors or that doctor as an instrument in his hand. And that he would... Um, Bless him through that surgery. And also, yes, ma'am, Ms. Brenda? Um, I'm sorry. Before I was going to come to reading this, I got two uh, messages from my friends in Las Cruces, New Mexico, that I went to school with. Yes. And both of them mentioned the bombings and the churches there. there have been, so we're not just being attacked by things we don't see. That's it. Uh, we're being physically attacked. Yes. It was, it was different denominations, it was a particular church. But they had to, they didn't get to worship together today in a lot of places. Yeah. Carol said that she did. It didn't affect their church, but that uh, they just kind of you know call everybody. So and you know this happened there, um, and usually when it happens one place, it's gonna happen. That's it. So I said, you know, we just uh, just need to pray. Amen. And and ultimately, and you know this as well as I do, we read the verse in verse twelve. It says, Before we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And folks, even though it is a physical attack, it's also a spiritual attack. And a lot of times we don't see that. It is a spiritual warfare that we are in today. And we need to pray for our brothers and sisters who are being impacted by these things. Um, and we've even seen that recently here in the United States, of churches being attacked. And uh, so we need to pray for our brothers and sisters. And we need to pray for each other and pray for God's strength um, and God's boldness. You know, I'm reminded of, uh, even over in the Middle East, of our brothers and sisters in Christ, even knowing that they would be persecuted and even killed because of their faith in Christ, they're boldly showing people, hey, we're Christians and we're not ashamed and we're going to tell it. And even though some of them are being killed, they're still exemplifying Christ in their lives. They're showing forth uh, their faith in Christ. And so we need to pray for them, and we need to pray for one another, that we would be bold in our faith, even in the midst of opposition. Because it is a spiritual battle that we're facing. And folks, we're the ones that are called to be salt and light. And so we've got to make sure that not only are we living our lives for God, but that we are proclaiming His truth boldly, not ashamed. Reminded of what Paul, the Apostle Paul said in Romans, I am not ashamed, for chapter 1, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, it's the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And so we've got a job to do. And it's sometimes even in the midst of opposition that we've got to stand firm in our faith, especially stand firm in our faith. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord because you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So we've got to be bold in our faith. Uh, but pray for our brothers and sisters who are experiencing persecution. Pray for our brothers and sisters all around the world. Uh, who are boldly proclaiming their, their faith. Uh, and we're even um, commanded to pray for Israel. We need to pray for Israel. Um, and, uh, you know, Jesus, or God said, he who blesses Israel, I will bless. So we need to be blessing them, pray for them. So any other requests tonight before we come forward and pray? Special needs or anything? Yeah. Yep. And 
you know, a lot of people um, kind of stick their head in the sand, you know, and they don't want to know those things because they're awful, they're terrible, and they don't want to know it. Um, so we need to pray very, very hard about that um, and do what we can, whether it's sending letters to, you know, emails or whatever, to your congressmen or your senators or whatever. We need to do what we can to get involved to, because uh, folks, I'll tell you, um, I mean, how many millions of babies have been killed? 51 million. Yeah. And I'll tell you, God help us. Um, but we need to do what we can to be involved. So, any other requests? Okay. Pray for the school garden. Yes, pray for our parents. Um, pray for the children who are starting school. Pray for parents too in this adjustment period. Uh, I know Heather mentioned to me that um, uh, that Seth was going to have to be getting up at about six o'clock every morning, uh, and he has not been going to bed early during the summer, and so it's going to be a difficult transition, I'm sure, for all kids and parents. It'll be a little bit of an adjustment period. Uh, so you pray for those uh, who will be starting back to school and, and so forth. Okay. Any others? All right. Well, why don't all of, you, all of you that want to, let's gather around the altar, and, and we want to lift these requests up to the Lord in prayer. And uh, certainly as you pray, think about this Carmen who's going to be having surgery on the 14th, but also uh, pray for Brother Mike in the morning as he has surgery in the morning. Okay? All right. I want to ask um, Brother Eric Miller, can you pray for us? Can you start us off? Uh, Brother Stanley, if you can pray, and then uh, I'm going to close this in prayer, okay? Father and God, it's a privilege to come to you this evening in prayer. And we give you thanks for that, Father, to have this privilege to uh, humble ourselves before you and to. Uh, have this ability to communicate with you. We thank you for that, Father. Father, we would ask that uh, you would address all of those prayer requests that we made this evening uh, to those around us here in the church, uh, to those who are near to us, dear to us, Father, that uh, you would lay the, uh, their burdens on our hearts and that. Uh, you would give them grace, Father, and you should give them uh, that extra portion of understanding that trials that they're facing in their lives uh, can be uh, can be made good, can be made right by facing by placing our faith and trust and confidence in you, and keeping our eye on your Son Jesus Christ and the salvation that He provides. Father, in particular, we would ask that you use. Uh, Positions that are treated by the mic tomorrow during the physical surgery. Father, we would ask that uh, you give them the wisdom to do, that you would give Mike the strength to uh, be on the road to speed recovery. Um, all that is done. Father, we also ask that you be with our nation. The, the symptoms of turning our backs on you as a nation are evident and prevalent in, in, in the news that we, you know, that we read today, Father. It is only when we would humble ourselves and turn from our wicked ways that you would bless us, Father, and we would ask that you give us that, you know, that understanding that you are in control, this is your world, this is your creation, and that we are but creatures, Father, and that uh, we are dependent upon you for our salvation. Thankful for that. We keep that per person foremost in our mind. God, we would also ask that um, you be with our our nation's leaders as they make these decisions that that are difficult to make. Problems. Sometimes we are quick to complain, and we would ask that you give us that moment to 
they pause and step back and, and pray for them that they may have uh, your wisdom and that uh, they may be doing your will and that uh, you would touch the Father that, uh, that they would indeed take those steps necessary in order to know your will. Father, we would ask that you be with that tiny nation of this Israel. She is surrounded. She is surrounded by enemies on all sides, Father. We thank you for protecting her, Father. We also ask that you would uh, continue that protection on your people there, Father. We would ask that uh, you would, again, move our leaders to support uh, that country, uh, not only in finance, military, but also uh, the American people, Father, that you would remind us constantly that we need to pray for them and that we would uh, pray for the peace uh, on your city, Jerusalem. And Father, we would ask that uh, you be with the youth this evening as they're out on their uh, trip, that you give them safety, that you give them an understanding that uh, it is only through service that that we can see that your example of serving us in the sense of Son of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Dear Father in heaven, I thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. Tonight, we give us Lord with daily so that our prayers will not be in vain to thank as we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ here tonight. May the book of mine tomorrow and you be recovered. The other ladies have a surgery on the board of Jesus. Most of all, Lord, give me a chance in my heart to put a burden on my heart to the ones that's lost. And to this church and all the churches are going to be difficult. And the pastors, both Satan and the pastors, they will believe it's just an word. We just trying to trip us up, Lord. But we know that we got the sword that's going to beat you one day. That's God's question for Oh, Lord, let us hide in our heart that we may not sin against you. And help us to be that servant. Be the best bitch we can so that the world can see Jesus is the Lord we do. Dear Lord, first in everything, dear Lord, just talk about this place. Where this country comes down here. Lord, one day to see many things. Not be being one day. We want to pay for it, Lord. Give us. I pray for each child, and so many others, and so many others, all the big bags, touching you in the home. All these children are precious in your sight, we work for it. And help us pray for this country. We're going the wrong way, and all the way to our current banks, our trust in you. Dear Lord, help us. Help us to love you more. Teach and everything, because you want to take care of us. We just trust in you. Dear Lord, the help us to always be there for us in this humble. In the name of Jesus, and reach out in the precious hand and have to love us. And Lord, Lord, it's going to be nice when we get to heaven. There won't be no more of these problems. I pray that no one will be left behind. We love you. Thank you for loving us. Lord, as we continue in prayer, we just want to lift up and glorify the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you loved us when we were yet sinners and you died for us. Lord, I pray that you would help us all to be everything that we need to be for the Lord, not just for our personal lives because of our accountability to you, but Lord, there are so many people that are watching us. Lord, you've said in your word that we're to let our moderation be known to all men is the Lord is at hand. God, it's our responsibility to live our lives in a way that would glorify you and that would reach out to others and let them know that Jesus is real and that he loves them. So Lord, I pray that you would give us wisdom and direction. And Lord, I pray you'd make us sensitive to those who need to hear the gospel message. Lord, that we wouldn't see people as just individuals, but they would, that we would see them as people with souls. It's going to spend eternity in either heaven or hell. So Lord, challenge us. Help us to take on these um, things that we've talked about tonight and to apply them to our lives so that we can be what we need to be for you. Lord, I do lift these requests up to you, Lord, for Miss Carmen, who's going to be having surgery on the 14th. Lord, I pray that you would guide the doctor's hands as they operate for Miss Lori, who's going to 
possibly be having surgery later. We ask that you would bless her and meet the needs of her life physically and emotionally. Lord, as she'll be having these tests and, um, and possible surgeries. And so, Lord, bless her. And Lord, we lift our brother Mike up to you. Lord, I know he is a man of faith. He has trusted and served you for years and years and years. And Lord, I know this, that the Bible says that we can come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. And Lord, I know that he's having surgery tomorrow, and I know even the best of us uh, have some anxiousness about, about the surgery. And, and Lord, I'm not trying to speak for him, but I know if it were me, I would. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, as we've come before you tonight, that you would uh, give him grace and give him peace. Lord, peace that passes all understanding that will keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We ask that for him tonight. Lord, as he gets up in the morning to go to surgery, I pray that that peace of God would, would, would be with him. And Lord, I pray for the doctor as he operates. Lord, I pray that you would guide his hand. Lord, we know that ultimately you're in a great position. And Lord, we know that you're going to watch after Brother Mike and you're going to be with him. And Lord, I pray that you would use that doctor again as an instrument in your hand to be able to make him well. And Lord, that you would give him that recovery in a very quick way that he would be able to get up and go about and do the things he likes to do. So Lord, we lift him up to you. I pray for my brother that you encourage him and strengthen him tonight. Lord, I pray for all my brothers and sisters that are here and that are not here. God, that you would strengthen all of us. And Lord, give us boldness in our faith and help us to be all that we need to be for the Lord because, Lord, we know that you're coming as soon. So we need to let that moderation be known to all men because you are in. So, Lord, thank you tonight that we can gather and pray. Lord, I pray that uh, you would increase our faith. I pray that you would give us that boldness. I pray that you would, uh, Lord, help us to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Lord, we lift again these prayer requests to you. Bless and meet every need. Bless us as we leave this place. Lord, draw us to yourself. Help us to be better Christian uh, tomorrow than we were today. Because we've read your word, we've listened to your word, and we've been a doer of that word. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The end.